Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I'm going to take a brief hiatus from my debunking videos right now to talk about a current public health issue, and that's the coronavirus. In the debunking and the conspiracy community, I'm seeing a lot of misinformation about the coronavirus. And as a physician, I thought I would step in and give you some of the correct information so that you can make decisions for yourself and your family. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now, there's a number of videos out on YouTube right now about the coronavirus. One of the ones that I liked is from Dr. Mike. And I'm going to play a short segment of that and give you an update from the time that Dr. Mike's video was created. So let's have a look at Dr. Mike for a minute. So please keep in mind that this video is being filmed on January 28th, 2020. I want you to keep this phrase in your head, alert, but not anxious. This Wuhan virus or novel coronavirus is really a potential threat to us here in the United States and is not a crisis yet by any means. So again, alert, not anxious. So let's talk about some of the stats that we know now. Currently, there's about 4,500 individuals infected with the novel coronavirus throughout the world with just over 100 deaths. The majority of these, the huge majority of these are in China. In the US, we have five total confirmed cases, zero deaths. Internationally, there are about 30 cases. Again, these numbers are gonna change quite rapidly. This is just to give you a feeling for what's going on in this moment right now. Now, coronavirus gets its name from the actual shape of the virus particle. As you can see, it's kind of crown-like. And there are two basic categories of coronaviruses, category A and category B. Category A is a typical upper respiratory type infection, much like the common cold. It's not that serious. Category B affects the lungs, and examples of Category B coronaviruses include SARS, which made headlines in 2003 and 4, and had a very significant mortality rate. An even higher mortality rate came from something called the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, which was active in 2012-2013. And most lately, we're dealing with what they call the coronavirus infectious disease of 2019, or COVID-19, which is the novel coronavirus that we're dealing with in this video. Now, the reason that this is called a novel coronavirus is that it's thought to have originated at a live animal market in Wuhan, China. And it's generally coming from bats or snakes. Now, after this bat or snake infected a human being, that human being in turn transmitted the disease to other humans. And this human to human transmission is why they call it a novel coronavirus. It's not the usual state of affairs where you get something from an animal and then it goes from person to person. Now the symptoms of COVID-19 are very much like many other viral illnesses. You get a fever as the body tries to fight the virus. You get a cough to clear the mucus and you get shortness of breath because the coronavirus that we're talking about, COVID-19, attacks the lungs and damages the lung tissue, which impairs your ability to take in oxygen from you, the air you breathe. Now, the spread of coronavirus is caused by droplet infection. As you see, when you cough or sneeze especially, you throw out droplets of saliva and mucus into the general vicinity. This has a range of about six feet. So one of the good rules of thumb that doctors like to tell you is if you're around somebody that's coughing and sneezing, try and stay at least six feet away from them. Now, another means of transmission is by bodily contact or surfaces that have come in contact with an infected person. Our hands, of course, are covered in germs all the time. And one of the main ways that we can combat the coronavirus is with careful hand washing and disinfecting high traffic surfaces that we may come in contact with. The incubation period of the coronavirus is thought to be 7 to 14 days. Now, according to the World Health Organization, these are the countries that are involved in the current coronavirus outbreak with reported cases. Now, the CDC does put out warnings for travelers to specific countries. For example, they're recommending against unnecessary travel to both China and Iran. As you can see, Italy Japan and South Korea have had significant cases as well. Now, to prevent transmission to the United States, the State Department has denied access to foreign nationals that have been to China 
or Iran in the last 14 days. U.S. nationals that are attempting to return home may be subject to quarantine for up to 14 days after travel to these areas. Currently, 20 U.S. airports are conducting passenger intake screenings in response to the coronavirus outbreak internationally. Now, to give you a breakdown of the cases currently in the United States, there are 80 cases as of March 4th. Nine deaths, 13 states have reported cases. 24 of them are traveler related, 16 are person to person spread, and the remaining 40 are still under investigation. Now, 49 of the cases were amongst U.S. travelers, uh, three from Wuhan, China, and 46 from the Diamond Princess cruise ship, which was traveling in Asia and had an outbreak. The CDC currently has a PCR test for coronavirus, and that test is available in most of the United States, and there are about 75,000 kits available. Now, at the time Dr. Mike did his video six weeks ago, he stated there were about 4,500 cases worldwide. As you can see now, we have 93,000 with almost 3,200 deaths. The virus has spread to 77 countries. This map is updated on a daily basis and is available on the World Health Organization's website. I'll have a link to it in the description. Well, let's finish this up with you. What can you do about this? Well, first of all, if you have been in contact with somebody that came from one of these endemic areas that is exhibiting some cough and cold type symptoms, and you're starting to get cough and cold type symptoms and suspect that you may have been exposed to the coronavirus, you should probably seek the advice of a healthcare professional. But don't just walk into a busy downtown emergency room unannounced. Call ahead, say, hey, I've got some family members that have been to China. They came back sick. Now I'm sick. I'm concerned about coronavirus. And they're going to say, most definitely, come right on in. Use the back door. We'll have a special room all for you. And they will bring you into an area where you're not exposing the rest of the patient population in the emergency room or the doctor's office. We don't shy away from seeing people with infectious diseases, so don't worry about that. We just would like to be able to take a few precautions. Now, if you're not ill and you're not in contact with somebody that came from an endemic area, chances of you getting the infection are actually pretty low. There are still a few things that you can do to reduce your chances. The easiest way to do this is something that I saw on Dr. Mike's comments from one of his viewers, and that is just remember the name Wuhan. Wash your hands. Use a mask properly. Take your temperature once in a while to see if you're running a fever. Avoid large crowds where you could potentially come in contact with sick people. And the last one's kind of important. Don't touch your face. Now, the virus can get on your hands, and if you touch your mucous membranes, pick your nose, whatever it is, you can put that virus into the environment it needs to grow. Keep your hands away from your face. In fact, one of the main reasons that masks are effective is not so much they don't spread the virus, but they prevent you from touching your face. Now, as far as masks go, an M95 mask is a healthcare professional mask. They're actually fitted to your face. There's no air gaps around them, and they filter out a lot of these things. They're relatively effective for people that are in contact with sick people. Now, as far as the typical surgical masks, they're, they're opened on the side. They really don't stop you from inhaling virus from the outside, but if you cough or sneeze, it contains it within the mask. And it also keeps you, as I noted, from touching your face. That's important. Now, how much of a risk is this going to be to you and your family? I tend to agree with Dr. Mike. You should be alert, but not anxious about it. Do you have something running through your community? That's something you should be paying attention to. You should be doing what you can do to prevent the transmission of the disease to you and your family. Encourage hand washing. Don't touch your face. Avoid large crowds. This is not really the time to take that trip to China. So the bottom line is, is this serious? Yes, it is. Is it the end of civilization as we know it? Probably not. I think the next election might be, but it's not going to be the coronavirus. So again, follow Dr. Mike's advice. Alert but not anxious. That's my advice as well. 
So I hope that this cleared things up for you a little bit, and I will be doing follow-ups on this periodically as the disease progresses in our community, just to keep everybody informed. So signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Dr. Bob, Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by and for your support of this channel. Stop by and have a look at Dr. Mike's channel. Uh, the link to it's in the description. And remember, be concerned, but not fearful. Take care, guys.